you mentioned when Darwin came out that there were churchmen <coughs> that bought on to his thesis. Yes. Which surprised me when you say that because I thought maybe even back then there would be no churchman that could keep his job that might subscribe to that. And obviously this has been a, a huge part of your work is going up against churches and doctrines. Well, nowadays most, most sophisticated, educated churchmen have no problem with it. Um, there are plenty of, of unsophisticated, relatively uneducated religious people who think there is a problem um, because they take the book of Genesis literally um, and uh, it, it would devastate their worldview if they had to uh, depart for they've been brought up from childhood onwards to, to believe that every word of the Bible is true. It's an odd belief because if you actually think about who wrote the Bible, there's no, no reason whatever to think they knew anything at all. I mean, just, just it was written by herdsmen in Palestine, who, who, who um, or in Babylon actually, it, was, it wasn't written until the, till the Babylonian captivity, but it was a, came from earlier legends. Right. Um, every tribe in the world has its own creation myth, and, and it, everyone is different, and they don't originate from anybody who knew what he was talking about. They, they just grew up in some sort of mysterious way. But still, there are people, plenty of people in, in America brought up to believe that, that every word of the Bible is literally true, just as people in the Muslim world are brought up to believe that every word in the Quran is literally true. Therefore, it, it, it's a terrible thing for them to have to, to lose um, this rock which they've been brought up with, um, the, the, the holy word of God. Um, but then, actually, if you talk to a bishop or an archbishop or a, or a or most clergyman of the Anglican or of Catholic Church, at least, they, they're quite happy with, with, with Darwinism. So the more educated they are, the more they're okay with it. Yes. But if you're not that educated and you just kind of take it on faith and it's a big part of your identity and you don't that's go right. further, yes, that's right. then you just accept it as truth yes. and move on. So it's a bit of a lazy way to look at religion. Well, I suppose so. I mean, I'm not sure which of them are more lazy, but, but yes. Does it still surprise you when you walk around, say, London or England, that religion is so woven into this culture? I mean, I was down at Buckingham Palace over the weekend, and there's a beautiful story of Queen Victoria, a beautiful statue of Queen Victoria, and she's holding like an orb and a staff, and I, I remember thinking of the televised coronation of Queen Elizabeth, and I, I'm, and I remember thinking, they say she's a descendant of God. And like that was a, this is well, what, well, or connected I, I, to God. I mean, isn't that, there's I don't divinity think they there, do right? really, you know. I mean, it, it, it the, that the coronation service is taken from the Bible. I mean, it, um, you know, the, the anointing with oil and things, that, that, that comes from Zadok the priest right. um, in, in, in the Old Testament. Um, so there's a kind of semi-serious buying into the myth of of anointing with oil, me, me, making you somehow divine, the d d divine right of kings, which which caused so much war and, and horror in, in history that nobody believes that anymore. Um, the Queen still is the head of the Church of England um, ever since Henry VIII. Um, the, 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 the monarch has been the, the head of the, of the Church of England, but he, People in Christian faith is not very widespread in this country. Um, if you look at, I mean, I mean, my foundation, the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science in Britain, um, did a survey uh, in 2011. There was a census. There's a there's a census in Britain every 10 years, and there's one in 2011, one in 2021, um, and. Um, one of the questions in the census is you get asked what's your religion. People tend to tick Christian uh, because that's they were brought up. They, they're, they're not Muslim, they're not Jews, so they're Christian. You know, they tick Christian. Um, but if you actually, what, what we did was to was to take a sample of people who tick the Christian box and give them a, a detailed set of questions to see whether they really were Christian, and they weren't. Very few of them were. Um, we asked them, you know, do, do you believe Jesus is a, your Lord and Savior. I forget what the faith figure was, but it was very low. Um, do you believe? Do you believe in God? Was slightly higher, but not not much higher. Um, and um, so, don't think that just because 
the, the Queen is constitutionally head of the Church of England, that therefore people in Britain believe in Christianity. Um, a few do, but not that many do. And fast forward a hundred years from now, will the church? Well, I would think so, but but uh, but I don't know. But when I say not many, I mean it's 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 something under under fifty percent. But 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 yeah. but so it, it is some. But um, the figure is much higher in America, but it's coming down in America, and the, and the number of people who uh, who now subscribe to no religion in America even is I think up about twenty five percent. Hey, do you want to profit from crypto? Then join my DeFi Academy. The Crypto DeFi Academy will help you create generational wealth. But don't take my word for it. Listen to my students. When I first got into crypto, I remember thinking to myself, I need to learn more. Brian Rose, learning crypto, learning DeFi, gotta do it. I am so grateful that I jumped in and did this. I had to break through some limiting beliefs that I can do this, that I can afford this, that I can be in this. It challenges um, the things that are deeply rooted within us. Joining DeFi Academy has been one of the best decisions I have made on my blockchain journey. This course was a life changer, a game changer, a huge eye opener, coming from knowing practically nothing at the speed of the learning over, the, over four weeks was just fantastic. The information you provided in this class was invaluable. I feel far more confident in my next steps. You took complex concepts and made them easier to understand. What's different than so many other ones is it just doesn't tell you what to do. It uh, actually makes you do it. This is for people who are serious about becoming traders. This is the way it should be done. I realized from this learning experience again that it is not about what you learn, but about who you learn it from. The energy was insane. I've, I've never experienced such incredible energy on a live call. Brian Rose, you, you are a legend, my friend. It's the only thing in the market where you can get all information and learn everything what you need to know. Everything is so clear and so well done. And I am um, just forever grateful for this program. It made me feel so much more confident about crypto than I did before. I did not anticipate how passionate I was going to become about it. This course has been like a big learning experience for me, not just in the crypto space, but just uh, in overall uh, balance of life. What I've learned is, you know, how to take ownership, you know, of my life in a way that um, I really, I really hadn't before. Yeah, you can't put a price on that, really. I would recommend it to anybody top notch. Excellence does not come cheap. You know, so if you want excellence, you gotta pay for it, but it's so worth it. Pull the trigger. That's what this course is about. You're not gonna regret it, really. It's amazing. Thank you, Brian and team. So what are you waiting for? Crypto is happening now. Click the link below, submit your application, and let me mentor you on how to create generational wealth and build the decentralized financial infrastructure of the future.